Welcome to MOOC course on introduction to proteogenomics. In today's lecture we have an industry expert Dr. Mukesh Jaiswal who will talk about advancement in cancer genomics. He will also give a brief introduction and overview of cancer genomics followed by recent applications of genomics in the area of cancer research. Dr. Jaiswal will talk about challenges of doing cancer research especially accurate diagnosis of cancer. As a result the cancer is becoming global burden and how by using new technologies like next generation sequencing technologies one could try to provide better diagnosis and treatment strategies. He will also talk about different strategies of treatment for example the conventional chemotherapy, radiation therapy and various type of drugs which have been used for cancer treatment. But more focus will be in which way one could start using new diagnostic tools by utilizing NGS technology. So, let us welcome Dr. Mukesh Jaiswal. I am going to give little drive how Illumina do the cancer genomics. Today's agenda I am going to give brief introduction of cancer genomics right and how this it is utilized for the campaign in diagnostic and how it is used for the treatment part. So, application part and then some introduction. So, let us start with some introduction. Cancer is basically if you see uh, in the life lifespan of any woman only uh, out of three one going to be have a cancer in man is one. So, in your long, uh, lifestyle lifetime to, uh, every three women going to every one woman out of three going to be a cancer and every one man out of two going to be have cancer right. 14, and 14 million new cases coming every year right and 8 million death every year and 32 million basically is living with cancer right. So, it is a big number right, it is a global data, it is not Indian data, it is a global data, but every year we getting a uh, number of people adding in there right. So, it is very important how to diagnose the cancer and then the treatment right, but good thing is that also of this figure actually. Nowadays this technology is advances in such a way right, we increase the lifespan of the cancer patient uh, 10 years right. So, out of uh, this is the data like out of like uh, 50 percent of the cancer overall cancer 10 uh, half of the patient basically alive till 10 year of the cancer treatment right. So, the time life the, the frame is increasing. And it this this is very for different cancer type like cancer if you test is cancer it is basically 69 to 98 percent vary. But see the lung cancer is still is like 3 to 5 percent right. So, so, so if you see this the this is the more uh, is better for treatment this is has the less treatment right. So, we need to really work out which is the best biomarker for the diagnostic and what with the better treatment possibility right. So, like if you start with like very early stage how we basically uh, do the cancer care initially like very early stage surgery and radiation chemotherapy right 1940s now it still be doing chemotherapy right. But now after the discovery of genome genomics genomics right 2000 we start targeted sequencing right Tar targeted drugs right. And now is the novel drug therapy called as immunotherapy, right? So, so Illumina focus is basically this part really help the cancer patient for the targeted therapy and followed by the novel immunotherapy. So, I'm going to cover these. Initially, like uh, uh, when there is a cancer, people say uh, this is a lung cancer, right? Breast cancer. But now, because of this technologies, this organs go to molecular level, right? 
when when there is a lung cancer, these are subsets of the genes, subsets of the genes which get mutated, and the dif there is a differential mutation. So, some organ has different type of mutation, some has different, right? So now we can say if you have a lung cancer, these are the subsets of the genes which get mutated, right? And these are multiple. It's not not one now. It's a multiple. It start from the one gene now is going to be a several gene for one one cancer cell, uh, cancer type. And some of those are common also, some are common also, right? So coming to the one example, see the lung cancer, right? See uh, 2003, we have Keras only, now 2016 we have like 17 different genes added, right? And these are basically all with the discovery phase and some are basically in the clinical trials also, right? There are drugs available for that because of the discovery of new, new genes which are mutated, we find out a targeted therapy for that and we have several drugs available for the treatment. Only important thing you have to do proper diagnostic at right time, right? So for treatment purpose, we should have targeted any work or multiple targeting? Multiple drug targeting sometimes. So I will explain some example. So it may be multiple, multiple also. So if you see the rapid increase of the drugs also, see here. 511 deaths are in the late clinical trials. So drugs are coming for the cancer with NGS. It's significantly increased, right? If you see the country-wise, if you see the US number, see here, this uh, light blue is available drugs for the treatment of different, different cancer type. So US have 14 different targeted therapy for the, for the treatment of these cancer, but see, India, India right now is, I think is not in number, but see the China is the, they are increasing well also, and six target therapy is there. So I think we are still in discovery phase, but I think coming future, we're going to be come somewhere in this number, right? So what is, how we detect the mutations? That's really important. I just taking the very basic things. What is the mutation in the gene, right? It can be multiple format. So, if you go gene, DNA variation, is a copy number, is a single nucleotide variation that's called a SNP. That means one base change. If you see this is DNA, see this is the one base change which is called a SNP, right? Another form of DNA variation is translocation, right? These are normal chromosomes and some part of the chromosome break out and it translocate to each other, right? It's called a translocation. Then there's some part of the DNA inserted or deleted in the part that called insertion deletion, inversion, and sometimes the some part of the chromosome is duplicated or deleted. That's why copy number changes. So there are multiple variants occur in the DNA. It may be formed of single copy SNP format, CNV, insertion, deletion. So we need to detect this type of mutation very in very accurate way, right? That's how Illumina helps uh, to the cancer patient for the detection of these variants. Plus also through the campaign in diagnostic, we also prescribe the treatments, right? If you go for the RNA variants, so DNA is, DNA we talked about, RNA variant means sometimes the genes are fused, RNA fusion, right? Sometimes the, the expression of genes is changed, right? So we need to change, look also the thing for the treatment of the cancer. So these are multiple form of variation in the, can, in the RNA format. To detect these variation, we do two approaches. One is the whole genome sequencing approach. That means you are sequencing whole genome, right? That means you, you are sequencing all 24 chromosome pair, right? Chromosome 1 to X and Y, right? To do this, you need, so what sequencing does, it reads chromosome number one, one time, two, three, all the time. It generates three GB data when you, when, you, when you sequence all the chromosomes, right? All the chromosomes, three GB. But if you read three ti 30 times, that means three GB multiplied 30, 90 GB data is required to sequence genome in 30 times. Means for the accurate read, right? What happened, right, when you start reading, you start one time, you add some 
error, right? So we do multiple reads, right? So for human genome, is recommended at least you read 30 times. So for one human genome, that means you're going to generate 90 GB data, and which is can be done in a Lumina platform only from HiSeq to NovaSeq, right? I will tell a little detail on, on that. So another approach is targeted therapy, targeted sequencing. That means you're not targeting your genome, you're targeting only the small portion of genome. That's called a targeted therapy. Suppose your cancer patient has multiple genes spread on different chromosomes. What do you do? During the library preparation, you only pull down these parts of the chromosome. The rest is removed, right? And these red circled one is captured. There's a different way of capture. I will take it in detail how we capture that thing. After capturing, what we do, we do the sequencing. It's the same calculation. If you do targeted sequencing and read by 100 100x, means 100 time, that means you generate that much data. Suppose this, this all red part of the DNA is total target size is 15 MB. If you read 100 times, that means you require 5 GB data. That's very simple calculation. It totally depends how much sequencing data is required. Basically, it comes upon what's your target design, what's your target size. If your target size is 50 KB only, you want to do 100 sequencing, you require only 5 MB data. So depending on your target, depending on your application, you might require different type of sequencer. So these are the Illumina sequencer. It starts from the very low data output. It's called iSeq. iSeq is on, generate only 1.2 GB data. That means it's, it's, it's good for single gene, like BRCA1, BRCA2, right? Very small panel, right? MiniSeq, it generate around 7.5 GB data maximum. MySeq, 15 GB data. NestSeq is 120 GB data. It all depends, it's high throughput. It's totally depend on what you want to do sequencing. Suppose if you want to do exome sequencing, means the part of the DNA which, which express their gene, right? So for one exome data, it requires 5 GB data, right? So if you choose MySeq, you can do only three samples because it's 15 GB divided by five, so total three samples. But if you go NestSeq, 200, 120 GB, that means divided by five, you can do around six, uh, around 20 to 30 samples, right? Then HiSeq, these are the HiSeq series, but we, apps, uh, we are not basically uh, selling this one. Now we have a NovaSeq. NovaSeq generate like 6 TB data, means 6,000 GB data. That means you can do around 500 exome, uh, 2,400 genome in one run. So capacity of the sequencing is really increased by the Illumina technology. Right. I think none of the platform here in, uh, in, in any, any player, we can do this much data generation, like 6 TB data. And these type of the sequencer like Nova say really help the community for the cancer care because you need to do very deep sequencing to see that variant, right? Because there's two type of variant, one time germline variant, which inherited to the mother and father, right? One is somatic, which is generate doing your life, lifestyle, right? And their frequency of, frequency of detection is very low, 0.01%. That means to detect that variant, you need to go for high X read, like 5,000 X read. You need to go 10,000 S uh, read, right? For that, you need to give, at least have the bigger sequencer to get this data, right? So Illumina, what Illumina uh, is, platform benefit is, the quality, the quality of data is basically very high. The Q30 is 99.9% is .9 that means, that means Illumina sequencing incorporate one error in 1000 base pair. So really, really high sequencing data, right? Then we do pair in sequencing. I think this is something very important when you go for the somatic mission detection. Coverage is very high. So there's a multiple feature which Illumina basically has a very good, uh, very good sequencing platform for the data generation. 
and actually total human genome 90 percent data is generated by the Illumina, right. So, because of these, 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 this technology, it is the, for the cancer patient, the different collaboration with the Illumina, these are the collaboration, people use this technology for the cancer care, right. So, one is Lex, Loxo, Bristol Mayer, right, IBM Watson, these are the collaboration which basically use the Illumina technology for the campaigning diagnostic. So, I am giving from this presentation, I am going to give some of the example how basically these are used for the application for the cancer care. So, this is the how the patient journey start right. If you see, if you see the very important right what type of therapy you are going to give the patient. This is a really important thing and for this diagnostics is very important. So, nowadays there is a multiple sample size maybe plasma maybe FFP tissues right. So, nowadays people use ISC, QPCR and NGS also, but there is some drawbacks when you go for the real time PCR or ISC because at a time you can do only one gene, right. But for the cancer is the multiple gene required you need to go for very high throughput sequencer to do the NGS, right. So, this, this is where the Illumina works start, what type of therapy you need to give to the patient and then monitoring. So, for this one, Depending upon the customer, right? Different, different or the uh, if there's a regional hospital, they do very small panels, right? Five to fifteen gene. Some are bigger clinical trials, right? They do five hundred gene panels. Some are doing whole exome or whole genome sequencing, and they do different approaches to identify the cancer. Uh, what's a, what's what's, a, what's the cause of that, right? So, we have a complete solution for the library prep instrumentation informatics part which tells you like uh, what what will the targeted therapy, what could target and what with how you and there is lots of clinical uh, trial enrollment going on and this instrument is also IVD approved. So, that means uh, you can directly apply into the IVD mode with research. So, I am telling this one is really because this is the NOVA 6 series is generated 6 TB data, but it can virtually sequence any genome, any targeted panel, any method and any scale, right. So, this, this technology basically people using to, to use for the targeted therapy. Let me show some example, this is iSeq, these are two, two DX model of the uh, NestSeq and MySeq some applications right. So, this is the this is the genes basically, this is around the 34 common gene, 34 common gene which is expressed in all most of the cancer type, different cancer type and these are common right. And these are basically germline, germline can, mutations which are in 34 gene. And if you see the BRCA here is basically common in 50, 50 type of the cancer. That means, that means you can, there is a, there is a question right, if, if somebody doing a single gene panel and somebody doing the multiple gene panel, the accuracy for the multiple gene is much better because it doing the multiple gene and these are common markers for all. So, it makes sense you do the multiple gene. So, wh what cancer, cancer gene does, it basically regulate the cell proliferation, DNA repair and other function. So, if you see this is the hereditary gene, this is like 114 one, one gene which are overlapping with the somatic cancer right and overall is around 500 gene basically which is involved in the cancer means in, involved in the cancer. So, it is already well studied right, some are hereditary, some are cancer uh, somatic and both are overlapping in some extent like 45 genes are overlapping. So, we try to design a one comprehensive panel right to and it can be come from different organ also to, to detect the these mutation one comprehensive not not one one comprehensive panel. So, this is one example this is done by the strand in India this strand in Bangalore. So, they use a multiple gene panel which is TST 1 uh, TST 15 uh, as a 15 gene panel 
and they studied this thing in the breast cancer and ovarian cancer, right? And they identified that the there is a 51 pathogenic mutation which are common in the breast cancer and ovarian cancer, right? So it's a value. If you value that, if you do the multiple gene, if you do one gene, maybe you miss it. Let's see the example. Suppose, suppose there is a colon cancer and you get a tissue for for the for the diagnostic, right? And you do only one test, KRAS, right? And if it is negative, if it is positive, that's okay. It's a therapy available, right? It's negative. You have to order another another test. It's BRAF, right? If it is negative, it's another test, right? And RAS, right? But if you do these tests, it takes 21 days and amount of the tissue basically gets more. You need every time you need fresh tissue and the cost of the per test is also add up. So that means if you have one common panel which can do multiple things and all the mutation, your therapy must be better, right? That's how the campaigning diagnostic or precise precise treat oncology treatment done. There is a patient, multiple target, means all, all type of cancer, one test. If you get something mutated, there is a different, different uh, informative part and you, your company diagnostic treatment is available, right? So it's very important when, what, what panel you're basically using. So Illumina has a multiple, uh, multiple uh, cancer panel also. So if you, we have the cancer, comprehensive cancer panel, we have a hotspot cancer panel, smaller panel also, the multiple uh, cancer panel. I will go one detail one by one. Let's, 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 let me tell you how we make the library. Like up to this point, I told you we have the different cancer panels, right? But how we make the libraries, right? That's a very important part. So we use a Nexter DNA Flex library preparation, right? In this, this is the very, very easy process. It takes only 10 nanograms of DNA. Any type of tissues, FFP tissues, usually the cancer tissue type is a lung, lung cancer, you get uh, going to have FFP tissues. And to make this library is only 6.5 hours. So it's very easy, right? And it's cost effective also. So how we make it? So just to see, this is the, your targeted DNA, right? Which you want to target, right? So this is the transposase based enzyme. It fragmented DNA in the smaller fragment, right? See, so now this adding the adapters at this, this is the target you, we want to sequence. And this is the adapter which is going to bind in the Illumina flow cells and indexes. So if you see, because we do the targeted sequencing, so that means you need have to have a probe which captures that target. Right, so this is the blue color is the probe. Probe is like 18 to 90 more big long, and it's bioregulated, right? So if it is bioregulated, it's bind to this target, and you have stepped up the label bead, it pulled down only that part, right? So it gets only that part of DNA, and this is the enriched part of your DNA. That means you have targeted, you have enriched only that smaller part of the DNA, right? So that means. With this technology, you can basically target smaller amount of the DNA for the sequencing. How long does the target So it totally depends upon your design. How it, it can be one gene only. And it's one particular probe, how long? It's an 18 mer long probe, but if it is bind to DNA, it may be bigger also. So, yeah. So, but we cut the DNA in such a format, if you see here, here, is 150 base pair. So it cannot be more than 150 base pair for sequencing. Yes. Yes. In diheterapy, and we try to make sure you all the part of that gene is covered. It might be overlapping probes also. Okay. Right? Suppose if we don't cover, we might lose some part, right? So that's how we do the library prep. Right. Okay, so after level, I want to show one case study here. In this case study, a woman of 60, 
eight year old is diagnosed with uh, melanoma, right? June 2011, uh, she so it's, it's surgically removed, right? But after a few months, is uh, the the cancer is metastasized, and it become uh, it it goes to the lymph node, and then uh, after two through three months, uh, they develop a subcutaneous pulmonary metastasis, right? So after doing surgery, also it basically goes. This increase is not 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 uh, basically cured. It's not cured, right? So what doctor did? What doctor did? Doctor ordered a test which covers only two genes, NRAS and KRAS, right? And they detected only three mutations. So when they when the when they find that there is no mutation on BRAF and no mutation on NRAS, right? So. That's why the therapy doesn't work because you didn't cover all the things. Then at the, at, at the end, NG test was ordered, right? And they find very novel mutation. It's a different mutation on the BRAF gene. This is the kinase domain and this is the mutation type. It's a totally different mutation, right? Now, when they find this mutation, in the kinase domain, what it did, with the help of that chemotherapy, they give another th targeted therapy to block this one. <coughs> they give the kinase inhibitors. And this is the name of kinase inhibitor, right? With the giving of this kinase inhibitor, the th in, in few months, 30% drop, and another, th another few months is 30% drop. Finally, basically, the case study is saying that studying only a f by the real-time PCR, a few part of the gene is may not enough because you need to go cover all the all the part of gene, right? And after studying, getting this type of mutation, they find that no, you can do one chemotherapy, but targeted therapy, kinase inhibitor, mixed together and is better for the treatment. So this is one case study how people use the targeted therapy, right? So coming to this, the important point, right? Doing one gene is not enough maybe 10 genes not enough because cancer is a bigger is big pathway multiple genes are involved it's not one gene so re recently we launched one TST 170 panel so so we launched when this panel and it covers most of the cancer type and it's involved to determine the different type of cancer it also detected the copy innovation uh, RNA fusion and all. So one gene panel. Okay, so one last point like I want to share. This is the novel therapy by Onco. It's Imno Onco. So up to this point I showed like there's a comprehensive panel made and different ways of therapy, right? I don't have time to cover all. But let's go this one. Imno therapy is really a very novel way to show like how we're going to treat by the immunotherapy. So if you see here one simple example, PDL1. So PDL1 is PD1 is basically, if you go this slide, this is the tumors, tumors, and this is the T cells. And the PD1 is basically expressed in the T cell, and PDL1 is expressed in the tumor cell. Their interaction basically blocks the T cell activation and allows the tumor cell grow. Right? So if the doctor gives the chemotherapy, Right, it's not going to help. We got T cell is not responding. So what the best way of the treatment? Give the dual therapy, targeted therapy, to block this PDL1, right? To block this PDL1 and give the targeted therapy. It will help the patient to recover fast, right? Because at that time T cell get activated and kill all the cancer environment. So these are the multiple paper where people use. Uh, anti pdl one for the treatment of the different cancer type. So if you see the example, this is the inhibitor of the pdl one If the tissue have the high pdl one expression, if you give this drug, the response is basically better, it gets better, at least for the treatment purpose, it is to 70, 70%. So that means you, by giving these kind of immunotherapy also, uh, it's better for the treatment of the case patient, right? So I'm stopping here. But the key home message, like targeted therapy, basically helping 
the cancer patient for the for the treatment and we are moving towards the campaigning diagnostic thing right so there is a one panel which is going to be the say this this is kind of mutation you have and this is going to be targeted therapy or targeted drug going to be available in the and the drugs are numbers are increasing maybe after five years you're going to have multiple drugs right so i think is things are changing with the target therapy and it's is growing so fast In today's lecture, Dr. Mukesh Jaiswal talked about different mutations and variations in the gene which need to be diagnosed primarily and accurately to deal with cancer. We also heard how specific industry technologies such as Illumina platform is going to provide new strategies to detect variations in DNA and RNA which could be used to select treatment strategies. He also talked about two important approaches that is used by Illumina in cancer genomic studies. First whole genome sequencing and second targeted sequencing. Thank you.